Yoga is occurring. Just quickly check on the weather. A shower is forecast, but probably just enough time to get in some rotating pull-ups before migrating downstairs for some single leg Romanian deadlift, trap bar deadlift, press up, some ab work, and also some high cadence Victor Campanart style zone one, zone two work. First, the amino acids and cold coffee. You know the drill. Well, I thought I was going to get 12 there until I started rotating gently in the breeze. Well, pull-ups is always relatively slow progress and I need no more excuse than the first drops of rain to scuttle back inside. Aiming to get as close to 100 reps as I can in three sets of the press-up, i.e. A little bit of aggression. Thirty three. I think 32 there. 35. That's like 95, 96 reps in the three sets. I think 96. I hope 96. 9.42. So when Jane says shower, she actually meant I need to shower um, pretty quickly today because they're turning the water off in the building in about six minutes. So, but it's high cadence session. It's only gonna be about 15 minutes long. And I built the cadence up to about 115 to 120. I'm trying to focus on keeping the tension on the chain. And I'm hoping that this session here on the bike will just get blood circulating through the legs, help the process of recovery. Because after the race on Saturday, which basically amounted to times two 20 minute threshold efforts, plus a load of other stuff. And then epic tempo mark two across 68 laps of the inner circle of Regent's Park. I was feeling withered come Sunday evening and was certainly needing a full rest day on Monday, which I took. So today, keeping the intensity low, stay way short of failure on a single leg deadlifts and a trap bar deadlifts and hoping for a good quality interval training tomorrow. Well, as I touched on during the training, today has all been about the process of recovery enjoying the movement patterns during the strength training, going nowhere near failure, other than on the press-ups and the one set of rotating pull-ups. Thereafter, just enjoying the movement patterns, focusing on the form, nice explosive movements and getting blood into the legs. And equally important in the recovery is the nutrition, and this is the Mark 1 post-workout. The greens, which I will go full gas on in a second. Protein, berries, the hippie milk's in the fridge. Good source of carbohydrates through the bagel and the PB and J. Now for the full gas attempt. Well, that seems to take a long time. 
Gravity, I think, was working slower there. Quick question for you. What happens when there's no water in the house and you haven't cleaned your surfaces for well, a full some, maybe five or six hours? I'll tell you what happens. Your ant pandemic returns. Look at them. <sighs> I'm so fed up of them, to be honest. An unwelcome house guest. Wednesday, 5.15, hopefully no rain. And on the day today, courtesy of Mr. Ed Laverack, is something called Max Effort Stimulus. Ed's Max Effort Stimulus comprises one minute max effort, three minutes recovery, one minute more max effort, three minutes recovery, one minute more max effort. This is the important one minute max effort, three minutes recovery. Then you complete repeating the one minute max effort until you fall to only 90% of the third one minute max. Thereafter, you cut the training short and drop into a little bit of recovery in zone one, zone two. I'm gonna have a slight variation on that in that I'm gonna complete one full lap of the inner circle of Regent's Park, which will take about 80 to 85 seconds per lap. Also, I'm gonna do it on the drops and remain seated. I find that harder than out the straddle and standing. I guess therefore the power is gonna be lower, but hopefully the speed a little bit faster. Anyway, on to the training. Well, that was a very challenging but nonetheless extremely enjoyable training. Really enjoyed myself there and on that first hot lap um, I reckon I got a PB around the inner circle of Regent's Park. Definitely not a KOM, the KOM is about 1 minute 11 to 1 minute 13. Not quite sure exactly which of those it is but nonetheless a PB for me. I reckon on average I'll be north of 400 watts but also seated and in the drops therefore a little bit more aerodynamic than in previous times um, and therefore hopefully a good average speed. Overall I completed 10 of the hot laps. So I was taking about four minutes of recovery in between each of those hot laps um, partly because the hot laps were as I say I reckon um, 1 minute 20 to 1 minute 25 rather than the one minute so I took an extra minute of recovery and overall I was happy with the quality of um, each of the laps. Uh, I reckon on that third lap I averaged 360 to 370 watts and then for the subsequent seven laps I completed 10 in total. I don't think I dropped much below really uh, an average of 330. I'll check out the data when I get home but I reckon overall um, I was just north of the 90% of the power on that third lap and getting ever better at deploying the power smoothly and evenly um, in the drops and seated with a nice even pedal power distribution and an also a circular motion with trying to pull back on the pedal stroke at the bottom. We'll see when I get home but now time for a nice little zone one, zone two 
amble through central London and some post-ride nutrition, then work of course. Magnificent morning. So I've had a very quick look at the data on Training Peaks and Strava. And Strava confirms that I did get a personal best on the inner circle at Regent's Park. Strava says I averaged 396 watts for 1 minute 21, um, 45.2 kilometers an hour. So happy with that and clearly being on the drops and a bit more aer aerodynamic has helped with the speed. Um, Training Peaks confirmed that in order to get that, I had to lay down the power for 1 minute 39 and average 396 watts, but at 1 minute 39. Now turning to my third um, effort, which we gauge all the other ones uh, that come after against, um, Strava confirms that my time was 1 minute 24 um, around the inner circle, averaging 357 watts. And Training Peaks confirms that I had to lay down the power um, for 1 minute 40 at 356 watts. My worst lap um, was uh, 1 minute 27, about 42 and a half kilometers an hour. And again, I had to lay down the power for 1 minute 40 to achieve that. And there, um, Training Peaks confirms the average power over that 1 minute um, 40 was 323 watts. Therefore, um, pretty happy with the execution of that. Again, very pleased to have done it on the drops and seated. Um, now time to get on with work on the computer there, obviously after a little bit of post-ride nutrition. Aiming for 12. <sighs> Big one. By the skin of my teeth. Well, I'm having a little high cadence recce of the reverse circuit of the Richmond UCI course because tomorrow is Saturday and I'm going to be racing Scott from Comhunt TV in a chase race. Now, Scott's going to be in the Cat C's, I'll be in the Cat A's. He'll be setting off five minutes ahead. And this course, Richmond, reverse, evens up the playing field because there's a bit of climbing for me, a bit of descending for Scott and plenty of flat and false flat. So, I'm figuring out where I need to lay down the power heavily and where I can be at threshold. But I'm also figuring out where Scott's gonna be at an advantage, i.e. the flats, false flats and descents. Because keep in mind, his FTP may be three watts a kilogram, but that translates to 300 watts, which is roughly equivalent to my own FTP in watts. Really looking forward to it. We've advertised it widely. Everybody's welcome. Time for the pre-race weigh-in. There we go. Racing at 63. Time to get on the bike. Right, first of the hard climbs. I'll try and stay seated for as long as I can. Focusing on the cadence, training difficulty, 75%. We were trying to find a completely flat course. It was meant to be volcano flat, but they changed it on Friday. We just finished the chase race. The tap de mine head stage one. It's one nil to bike racing without mercy versus Comhand TV, but I'm sure Scott will even up the account. Very hard race. I got personal best in terms of heart rate over five seconds through 20 minutes. The five second heart rate was 191, 20 minute was 182. So that shows how tough it was. Normalized power 285, 4.5 watts a kilogram. Super difficult, but most of all, I really enjoyed the community aspect of the race. Certainly we're gonna do 
and a tap to Minehead Stage 2 and 3, and I hope more people can join us. But from the A's, I want to say thanks to Reuben de Clark, Lee Baxter, well done on that seventh place, Lee, Ed Laverack, of course, Theo Vodikis, and Stuart Featherstone. Congratulations, sir, on that second place with massive power overall and a huge, huge sprint. And in the Bs, Dean Dingle, hope your legs are all right, Dean. I know you were coming back from recuperation and you slowed up a little bit in the final four kilometers to avoid injury. Hope all's okay. In the Cs, Chris Redman, Michael Harron, Phil Churchill, Dave Ives, and Samuel Tutton. And in the Ds, Dave Rawson. Thanks ever so much for joining. Gonna have another one, but now on for a bit of post-ride nutrition and hopefully a little bit of strength training and a bit of zone two tomorrow. Lord de Lego, the quest for the perfect cinnamon bun continues. I know being from Sweden, you're an aficionado on such matters. Jane has been to the little bread peddler and we have two options here. One is a pure cinnamon bun and one is um, orange and cardamom as well. I am not sure which is which. That looks good. Oh, but this looks nice as well. Look at the uh, sugaring on the top. I'm just gonna cut straight in. I think this is the cinnamon bun. Yeah, that's the cinnamon bun. Lord, just for you there, sir. Hopefully this passes muster. Mmm. That is good. Now Lord De Lego's expertise knows no bounds. It goes way beyond WKG and cinnamon buns. He also recommended the orange and cardamom bun, another speciality and delicacy in Sweden. So here we go. Cuts nicely, Lord. Does that look all right, Lord? Mmm. That is on another level, it is really good. Orange and cardamom buns, perfection.